Oh, safi kwa likuwa lile. Wali ya Superman Astro Magician. Anamwekea. Oh, Bernard Morrison again. Anamwekea Johnny Boko. Forbes has listed Muhammad Denji as the youngest billionaire in the African continent and the 16th richest person in Africa, aged 45 as of 2020. To start you off, I'll share the story of his academic journey. Muhammad Dewji, or was popularly known as Mo Dewji, was born in 1975 in Singida, a region in Tanzania. He later attended his primary school in Arusha and moved to Dar es Salaam where he attended the International School of Tanganyika, a school that diplomat kids and foreign students attend. He then finished his high school in Florida before attending Georgetown University. After graduating in Georgetown, he worked at Wall Street for a short time and later returned to Tanzania to his family business. Entrepreneurs have people who motivate them. They have people they look up to. And for Modeuji, it was his parents. His father molded him into the business side while his mother played a role into shaping his personality, a role that was also played by his grandmother. Mo also attributes his philanthropist attitude to his mother. Mo believes that Africa is a huge potential with the fastest growing economy and youth should therefore realize that they are in the right place at the right time and that it's easy to create wealth and everything you touch is money. Entrepreneurs are often faced with a lot of challenges along the way and it is best to have things that drive you, things that keep you moving in tough times. More had two of these things. The revolution. The first one is the desire for the creation of wealth. And the second one is giving back to the community. Mo believes that the more wealth you acquire, the more you should be giving back. This is why him and his wife founded the Mo Deuji Foundation, a foundation that aims to enrich lives and elevate Tanzanian citizens from poverty and hardship. Mo understands that with success and subsequent wealth comes responsibility. And for him, this responsibility has been given back to the community. On his way to his hometown, Singida, Mo saw a man scooping water from a yellow pothole and he was taking it to his family. Not believing it, Mo went with the old man to his family, only to see the children drinking the yellow water, one which causes them to get sick, and most of them dying due to poor health services. Believing that everyone should access clean water among other services, Mo decided to run for MP, Member of Parliament. In 2000, when Mo was 24 years old, he beat a guy in the primary 
where he had 94% of all the votes. But the party wouldn't nominate him as the candidate because he was young. Moore continued to do business and developmental works in Singida until 2005, where he won the nomination and became the MP for Singida. Some of the development he brought to Singida included building 16 new secondary schools in a state with 200,000 people. Two schools could only accommodate 320 students, and this was in urban areas. With building new schools, the graduating number was raised to 4,500 graduates. He also fixed the accessibility of water from 23 to 83% which also included injecting his personal money into the project. After completing two terms, Moore retired from the parliament in 2015. After saving his hometown, Singida, through Chama Chama Pinduzi, CCM. When asked if he ever thought of becoming the president, Moore replied, do I want to become a president? No, I am an entrepreneur. After the Tanzanian government, Modeuj leads in providing the highest number of employment opportunities in Tanzania. When Mo took his family business, it was a trading house, meaning import and export. They were importing everything from sugar and wheat to cotton and soaps while exporting cashews, maize, cowpeas and everything in between. With low barriers in import business, soon the space became saturated. With a stiffened competition, the margins for soft commodities, which were metals mainstay, were thinning. With the government initiatives such as paying zero tax on imported raw materials and 20% tax on importing finished goods. This led to entrepreneurs such as Mo to industrialize the country. Mo Deuji couldn't understand why they would import edible oil and soaps and after presenting the idea of manufacturing such items, his father believed that they had to stick with the import-export business, one that they were familiar with, and that young Moore's idea was capital intensive. An opportunity came in 2003 when the Tanzanian government put some loss-making state-owned manufacturing assets up for sale. Moore took a loan and bought these assets which included soap production, grain milling, rice, and sugar blending, while also going into edible oil business and textile industry. More expanded metals oil refining capacity from 60 to 600 tons almost immediately. The underperforming edible oil refinery that was acquired in 2005 is now the dominant manufacturer of oil, soaps, and fats in the country, controlling 60% of market share and contributing to more than 30% of metals annual revenue. Deuji is also in the textile industry, and same with oil refining assets, he also bought textile mills that the then socialist Tanzanian government had invested hundreds of millions of dollars that couldn't be managed. Deuji bought them out cheaply. Moore's strategy is based on a quasi-leveraged buyout model, a model in which Moore buys loss-making businesses, restructures them, 
putting in good management and in turn making the businesses profitable. Quasi leverage buyout model is usually associated with taking loans with collaterals being assets of the acquired business along with assets of the acquiring company. Now, Metal deals with almost everything. They have 300 products that they import and sell in Tanzania from tractor to bicycle. Did you know that Modeuji launched more cola to compete with Coca-Cola in Tanzania. When you speak about Mohamed Deuji, there is one thing you can never leave out. And that thing is what differentiates him from other billionaires. And it is something that people love him for.